Holy scripture or scientific text, the Quran is both. There is no clash. Hi. When the famous physicist and astronomer Galileo first championed the idea that the Earth revolved around the Sun back in the 1500s, he was called a raging lunatic and convicted of heresy by the Church. He was then sentenced to life imprisonment and died under house arrest around nine years later. But if a ten-year-old tells his science teacher that same fact today, nobody even bats an eyelash. So what's changed? Lots of things. The world has evolved, new technologies have been developed that help us more accurately understand astronomy, for example. So poor old Galileo was not insane. He was simply before his time. Luckily, scientists today have more advanced tools and gadgets that can help them avoid meeting the same fate as Galileo, but sometimes their claims still make us do a double take when we first hear about them, especially if we don't have a background in science and physics. Let's look at an example, shall we? In 2011, in the 39th issue of the Thresholds Journal entitled Inertia, one of the articles, written by Dr. Caroline O'Fowler, who has a PhD in the Department of Art and Architecture from Princeton University, is entitled Standing Mountains Move Like Clouds. In this article, Dr. Fowler offers her reflections on inertia using the artwork of a famous painter called Abraham Blomert. She begins by describing the concept of inertia as defined by Sir Isaac Newton's first law of motion, namely that a body will persist through force in a state of either rest or notion until moved by another body. She then goes on to shower her praises on the painter for his ability to express this rather abstract concept of inertia with only the stroke of his paintbrush in a single picture. In her conclusion, Dr. Fowler further draws attention to the fact that Blomert moved towards an understanding of movement, which is not about setting things into motion through a violent force, but instead suggests the notion that the world may already be in movement, and like the mountains that move like clouds, movement and rest are two different, but ontologically equal states. It is impressive when art is able to depict scientific notions in a straightforward way. But long before Blomat, Newton or Galileo himself, it was the Quran that presented the understanding of force and movement as a relational concept. In chapter 22, verse 88 of the Quran, it reads, And you see the mountains and think them solid, but they move like clouds. It is God's technique which has established everything perfectly. Centuries ago, God told us that he created the world following the laws of inertia. It is science that is just now catching up. So who says science and religion have to be at odds? In the Quran, science and religion are twin sisters, and I don't mean the type of twins that keep saying they're identical when everyone really knows they're fraternal. The Quran contains many passages that were not understood by scientists, let alone regular people, until recently, and some that science still has not fully deciphered. But this should come as no surprise. In fact, the Quran itself tells us that this will happen when it says, And these similes we put forward for mankind, but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. Let's look at that word a little closer now, simile. It's very fitting that the Quran should use that word, seeing as how the book itself often uses similes and analogies to help explain things that might otherwise seem abstract or unrelated to us. But what's even more astonishing then, that is modern scientists have used some of the exact same analogies that were first written in the Quran over 1400 years ago. Try it for yourself if you like. Try telling a police officer that mountains move like clouds and watch what his reaction will be. But be careful because if you persist in saying it, he might just consider you drunk and arrest you. What can I say? Sometimes the truth hurts. I think Galileo would agree with that, don't you?